Who doesn't like walking into a movie theater and catching your favorite movie? Or what about sitting back on that big comfy couch watching an episode of NBC's Third Watch? How about a fully stunt-loaded, action-packed martial arts film? <laughs> you know what? You don't want to miss this. Keep it locked right here. Do what you got to do. Take the remote, throw it out the window. Do whatever you got to do to keep it right here. The shorter level, your way of thinking about life eternal. Another message, and you can test it. And the set that is going global. It's just a chance for you to see that there's more than what you see. There's new life abundantly. Yeah, it's a knowledge factory. My next guest has a real passion for passing things on that he has learned. Now, I've worked with him on the CBS drama series, The District, starring Craig T. Nelson, and he was always helping and grooming up-and-coming actors. I had a moment to spend with my friend and interview Mr. Roger Aaron Brown. Take a look at this. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Deputy Chief. All right, you got an ETA on the Chief? I need a 20 on the Chief. He's just in. What's his mood? Conroy. His mood. Morning, Chief. Conroy, how you doing? Good to see you. How's the family? Doing great. Atta boy. Peppy. Sir, the Chief is Peppy. Peppy. Welcome back to the Knowledge Factory. I'm your host, Scotty o Arnold, and we are here with an amazing actor. We are here with Mr. Roger Aaron Brown, and you've seen him on many things. Roger, how you doing? I'm fine, Scotty. How are you? Oh, I'm, you? I'm doing well, sir. I am doing well. You know, Roger, I, I would really like to ask you, uh, how did you actually get your start in the business? Well, I'm old school, Scotty. Um, my drama training took place, as a matter of fact, uh, where you are in Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania, at the old uh, Carnegie Mellon Carnegie Tech Drama School. It was the oldest drama school in the country. And I did that because I wanted to make sure that I had something to lean on, which was a great education. And no matter what, I knew that I could always do theater. You know, Hollywood's a different animal, but if you get your stage chops, you're always going to be able to work somewhere. And from there, through regional theater, uh, the American Conservatory Theater in San Francisco, New York Shakespeare Festival, things like that. So when I landed in Hollywood, I was on both feet. What is it like for you being a Christian in Hollywood? Well, Scotty, that's an interesting concept because you don't know whether you're the lion or the lion food sometimes. Uh, Hollywood's a very interesting animal because uh, you really encounter the devil across the negotiating table all the time. There are times when you are sitting across from people that are evil. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Just palatable evil, making too much money, having too many fan letters sent to them every week. And, and that's when you really have to draw your line in the sand. And uh, I was very fortunate. I was raised in the John Wesley African Methodist Episcopal Church in Washington, D.C. And I grew up in that church. So it really uh, provided me with a good suit of armor for Hollywood or anywhere else. And uh, to be honest with you, that made it quite easy for me to come amongst uh, the people in Hollywood. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me ask you this. Um, there are so many uh, uh, different levels of, of success. Can I ask you, what, would, what is your definition of success? That's the incredible thing about uh, anyone that's in any profession. Because you first have to define what your goals are, what success means to you. Okay. For me, it's always meant being, A, a good human being, a good husband, and a good father. I waited 37 years before I got married. So uh, pretty much every itch I'd always had had been scratched by the 37th year. Uh, okay. And I was fortunate enough to, you know, marry a woman that was... Uh, just a brilliant woman smarted me, and she didn't take any stuff. So what had... was the original goal for you in life? 
I have someone in a balcony at Cardoza High School to thank for throwing that paper airplane out of the balcony. Uh, I was doing the play uh, Antigone. I was playing Creon the King. Once that airplane flew through and the kids started laughing and that ramped me up to continue with the speech and they all got quiet, I understood that one of my goals in life was to pursue this art form. And then I've always been a bit of a humanitarian, a historian. And I think all of us simply want to leave the world a little better than we found it. What was your relationship like as, as you did the, the television show, uh, The District, on CBS? What was your relationship like with Craig T. Nelson? We did that show, as you know, for four years. The first six months, the seven or eight months, I hardly said a word to Craig Nelson. Because the good thing was that I was old enough, I was old enough not to want to come in and just uh, jump in his lap and tell him how great he was on coach. Okay. I came there to work. So other than being polite, I hardly said a word to him for the first six or seven months. I was busy working. I stayed in character for the first year. And my particular character was that of an officer who had been overlooked by Craig's character uh, as far as being the chief of police. So there was a burr up my butt, and I sort of kept it there on and off screen. Um, are there any funny stories that you could possibly share that, that might have happened to you on set, or you, know, you, know, you just being on set and happen to, you know, some, happen to somebody? Well, defining moments. Now, I've been working in Hollywood since, what, 1972. One of the first shows I ever did was Streets of San Francisco. And, you know, fate, fortune are one thing, but that's why I went to drama school. And, and I love the process of going out to audition. It's one of the only honest moments in Hollywood. And um, people who, who are not in Hollywood at all always give you stories about it's who you know. So when I got uh, the job on the district, that's why I didn't speak to uh, Craig T. Nelson. I came to work. I came to play. So it was about six months where all I would do is show up and do my part. And one day we're on set and somebody's cell phone goes off <laughs> in the middle of a big scene. Yeah. And, you know, God help me, I, I started cursing like a sailor. <laughs> and Craig T. Nelson was on the set and the entire room went, oh. Because there's certain things you do when the king's sitting there on the throne and there's certain things you don't do. Right. So I had gone out on a limb going off on the set about that telephone. Right. And I'll be darned if Craig didn't back me up. Wow. And that was a defining moment in our relationship and, and my time in that world because we had one of the most disciplined working sets in Hollywood. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, the, and that moment was it. I've worked with Roger M. Brown for four seasons. And as an actor, I have learned so much from him. That's Mr. Roger Aaron Brown, y'all. A level that should let it go. Thinking about life eternal life. A message and you can test it and accept that it's going global. It's a chance for you to see that there's more than what you see. What are you looking at? <laughs>